page four. I'll sit on prayers before we come to page four. As children of loving Heavenly Father, let us ask His forgiveness for His gentle and full of compassion. We come to God knowing we need His mercy and forgiveness. And so in preparing to celebrate the Rupa Mass, we call to mind our Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ our Lord, who prepared a place for us and returned to us home. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promised that all who believe in, in you will rise to Lord, Lord have mercy. May God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of His kingdom. When dust and ashes have no influence of us. Master Father, Hear our prayers and comfort us. Renew and add us to your son, whom you raise from the dead. Strengthen our faith that who have died in the love of Christ will share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one of God, now. the strength to live by new path in the knowledge of the eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to speak here to Jesus. Alex Matiava, uh, Dr. John Vogel, and the team from Healing Hospital. According to protocol, please identify yourself if you are from Kabaka's uh, representative, Bakungu. Uh, okay. If there are no home from Kabaka's representative, acknowledge. If there are princes and princesses from the royal Baganda, Hospital if present, or Central Bastille Hospital present. Friends and families, thank you, thank you so much for sparing your valuable time to come and share us to celebrate the life of our beloved Joyce Faro Katembe, also known as Nagatan's her maiden name. If I can go through her names, uh, it's just that when you are born, you are given a traditional name which belongs to your clan. We all belong to clans in our tradition. And that name, I guess, was Nagatans. Usually, uh, who would from ancestors? Usually, it's going to be your paternal aunt. And then you are given a Christian name, which is Joyce Grace, which was the 
Katende is adaptation from the uh, colonial days. That these days we tend to adopt our father's name. So it's, her father was Katende. And then as I narrate later on, she got married and she acquired a name, Faru. That's the part of my heart. First of all, before I go on, I want to uh, uh, to pay tribute to Miss Lai, Dr. Lai, and the team breast unit at St. Albans Hospital. Um, that's the, my name, I did introduce myself as the big part. My name is Joseph Mara. I'm a surgeon, general surgeon, now specializing in breast surgery, and I work at St. Albans State Hospital, where Joyce was treated. I didn't take part as expected in her treatment by my colleagues, I leave that my colleagues. I came to know that uh, she had local advanced breast cancer of sites, local advanced. And she also had spread to the liver, we call metastasis. Usually when that happens, we refer for palliative surgery, for palliative treatment, and chemotherapy keeps it. This why I'm so grateful, because if you leave local advanced cancer treated, breaks to the skin, comes and manage it with my so she managed to solve the case. She did the mastectomy from both sides, and some of the wounds healed. So we got the second step, we are trying radiotherapy, and then chemotherapy. My tribute goes to Dr. David Miles and Stephen Sugarland. These are the medical oncologists. They gave up everything. Believe me, they gave up everything to keep her. Um, after the operation, um, my colleagues told me, you know, Julie, we've just operated on a patient and she put your name down as a milk next job again. And, uh, Shock. I said, really not. Yours <laughs> never told me about her illness. I kept quiet because, because of uh, our confidentiality, private respect, I did not tell him on that. I just kept quiet. But, you know, diagnosis is not the end. We have modern treatment which keeps people's lives alive for some time. I mean, when you are diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, your chances of surviving five years is 25%. Uh, it's like a higher United States. Well, the treatment she was given has beaten all that. She survived, she was done somewhere in 2014. And she lived on for more, about eight years, eight to nine years. And believe me, uh, when she was given the diagnosis, she eventually told me, you know, but all I'm praying for that I survive here so I can go back to Uganda. See my relatives to look at my assets. Uh, she was very well organized because I came to know that she had estates, about three, three plots of land apart from the one she inherited. Uh, she, you know, she was a nurse. She managed to do all those savings. She survived the year, looked well, and she, she said she's going to give herself a treat. So she went to Uganda, chauffeur driven a car, she stayed in a five star hotel, and she made the best of it. So she came back and actually started working at the living hospital. Um, yeah, and you know, we got on like that. And eventually, chemotherapy shriveled the metastasis in the liver, and we thought it's going to go away. It didn't go away completely. She also had uh, metastasis in the lungs, but after a course of chemotherapy, the lung problem disappeared completely, <coughs> and the liver then shriveled. <coughs> it didn't go away completely. We started working. And in March 
comes last year, she told me she's got a lesion in the brain. But that was not the end. Dr. Mars was determined to carry on. I hope he can hear my testimony here. She was referred to Queen Square, where she had cyber knife treatment. This is a stereotactic targeted radiotherapy to a lesion sparing uh, collateral damage to the surrounding tissue. She survived that very well. And at that time, um, I told her, we discussed, I said, look, you know, who knows? I might go before you, you might go before me, but tell me what are your plans. I told her, for me, I've launched you with a, a solicitor, did my will and so on, and gave her all the details. And I also gave her uh, addresses of uh, addresses of uh, Pauline Naituma, who is works here. Because Pauline has a plan of you register with insurance and when these things inevitable come, you already set up your funeral, your pay. I gave her all that. Um, and I thought she would follow it up. Um, so, can 25th September, you know, we used to phone her almost. Every two days. My wife Josephine, she used to phone her almost every day or two days. And as we used to chat a lot, she was very intelligent and she was into this politics, political thing, international politics, labor, conservative, and all that we used to talk about that. She was very much interested in that. So we used to chat a lot. 25th September, Josephine phoned her, we had a nice chat. And then I came back from work on Friday, this is about three days later. Uh, I phoned her, there was no answer. No. Then I started with phone her on Saturday, there was no answer. This is an unusual from Joyce. Came Sunday, uh, the first of October, we phoned. There was no answer. I told Josephine to let's go and check on her flight. We knocked at her door. No answer. The neighbors came around. We saw them with the door looking rubbish into this thing here. Yeah, is... We found the Mount Van Hospital. They said, Yes, we recognize that is our patient, but it's not here. We found the Water General Hospital. They said, Yes, we know that patient, but it's not here. Then we got concerned and we called the police. Um, the police came again, knocked the door, phone. No answer, they decided to storm, uh, break the door. So they went up and they came down and they said, Prepare yourself for the worst. Are you brave enough to come? But they called the ambulance first. The ambulance came and confirmed her death. And then the police took us upstairs. I encouraged my wife to come because I didn't want to go to my own. But I wanted a witness, I wanted support. And we found, unfortunately, she was dead in her city. The sound of it was on the floor. So, um, the, the, the police called me in to confirm that that is her, and I confirmed that, that she was. So that was phase one done. Uh, about a few weeks later, it was all under the corona. The corona went through the uh, files, medical files, and confirmed that her death was not suspicious in any way. It was due to uh, succumb to breast cancer. So that is phase two done, and then the court they said, look, we've checked in the medical files, your name is there next of kin. That's the worst. Uh, nobody prepared me for that. 
and they said if you can consent, we'll arrange cremation. Now, cremation is very alien to our culture, and I, I didn't think Joyce wanted to be cremated, and she got the ratings. Um, <clears throat> okay, at the time she died, uh, you know, she was very reserved. I could be excused to say, to think that we were the only family that she knew in Britain. But during her, when she was still alive, she used, well, I used to go to Uganda more often than she did. She used to give me, uh, because she's got, there are three people I knew that correlated to Joyce. The first one is Ese Katende. This is her sister. She's now 69, something like that. Unfortunately, Esri lacks capacity and she's physically handicapped. And she was being maintained or looked after by a gentleman called uh, Mlef Namskozi, who Grace had left in charge to look after her ancestral home, looking after his disabled sister. So I knew um, Murev Naskombi, who was looking after her estate and looking after her essay. And then, whenever I went to Uganda, he has, um, she had a nephew called Sam. Other nephews had not done well with her estates, but he appointed Sam. Please, Sam, stand up. So he trusted him and he took over looking after her estates in Uganda. These are the three people I knew I didn't know anybody else. So when it came to that, they said they want me to authorize the cremation. Uh, because I'm next working. I told them oh, he's, he's got relatives in Uganda. I have, we would like her to her body to go back to Uganda to be buried alongside her ancestors. Then, of course, I didn't have money. Then they said, okay, we'll give you the certificate and you can carry out the, the funeral. And I said, I don't have money. I asked them, look, if you're going to spend the money for her cremation, can you transfer that to? Our one of the funeral directors to help us carry out the funeral process and send her for the world. They said we don't have a process to do that. Now that was tough. How am I going to say? Joyce did uh, appointing me as next of kin, she didn't give me any paper. We don't have a will, anything. We don't know, we don't have access to her cards, we don't have a passport. I was there with nothing. Um, so I said, I'm going to see why they had to go back to Uganda. So <coughs> I liaised with uh, Sam Mugiobe, her nephew. And we came up with a plan. Maybe Mr. Mugiobe might expand on that. But all I know the summary is that the only way to raise money to help to add us with the funeral was to sell one of her assets in Kampala. And that's what Sam did. So part of her land was sold, she got some money. And that went towards uh, the contacts with uh, Pauline Nanjuma, and she accepted. Now, when the coroner or the, uh, was the, the council told me that we want to cremate her, uh, we made your permit and said, I can't. Then they said, well, you have her in this reserve. We're going to keep the body in Hemohan State, charging 80 pounds a day. So that was also frightening. Um, but this is where Najuma comes in. And I'm sorry, she lost a relative now is in Kampala for funeral. But she's been a pillar in helping us out. Can you imagine? She says she offered to get the body out of Hemohan State and bring her here. So that bill, I think she said, in a month of 10 days, 800 pounds. I don't know whether they come back chasing for it. So, tribute to Pauline uh, Najuma for that time, all along. So we got all that money, we got the money uh, through Sam, 
Thank you very much for that effort. And then we say we don't have enough money to do anything else. We're not going to have a service. Let her go to Kampala. Then came Team Healing. Team Healing, they said, we need a service. Thank you so much. We said we don't have money to service. Within 48 hours, 500 pounds were raised by Healing Team. And they didn't go. <coughs> and so we got on to this plan. Now, the other thing came about is, oh no, we can't afford a Zoom. So we left a Zoom. <coughs> we can't afford a video. We liaised with uh, Stephen Murombe. <laughs> and, well, guess what? 300 pound raise. You have it. Now we're ready to go, and our sister or our friend, our auntie, will be able to be repatriated to Uganda to lie around her ancestors. I'm very grateful. I also have tribute to Sam Mujobe officially. He is based in Uganda. He, the council. One thing I must mention, between me and Mjobe, when we saw uh, Mr. Webb, the environmental manager, he brought out a paper. He said, look, we found this in Joyce's house. And that paper is a draft and signed, was assigned to appoint Sam Mjobe for, uh, what do you call it? power of attorney. So this document must have been um, decatured to Joyce for signature to go back to the lawyers in Kampala. They picked it up. We don't know where they found it. It looks like Joyce was in the process of signing it and send it back, offering, giving some job a power of attorney. She never signed. It's not signed, but it is there. I don't know whether it matters with legal processes. Uh, I think now the background. How do I come to be involved with Joyce? Uh, a child who, a friend of mine, Fausta, used to come to our house, spend you know, come shopping and spend a holiday with her husband. But in 1994, she arrives with this lady. Who I didn't know. Later, to be known as Joyce Katende. She was a nurse in Uganda and she had come to pursue her career in nursing in the UK. Now, they said, so far, so said, can you post her so that she finishes, she completes her registration so she can start nursing? We all right. She stayed with us for six months. We started registering, started doing agency work. And then subsequently, we lost her for a while, for a good 20 years. We didn't know where she was. And I, 20, 2014, uh, we bumped into each other at the Shell, and she's well uh, green in St. Open, the Shell petrol station. She was feeling up, I was feeling up. And I was surprised to see her. I said, Oi, where have you been? Then she said, Oh, you know, I registered, I migrated to Ireland, I was working there, and I got married. The man called Farah. I congratulated Farah. Oh, welcome. So um, then we started again communicating with each other until her illness came to happen. I don't think I have any more to say. But thank you so for coming. Be very nice to bid farewell to our grand Joyce. Thank you very much. Can I invite Sam to come and tell us what you know about? Thank you all for coming. Um, good morning. I'm not so good with speeches, but I will try. Uh, 
My name is Sam Mujoli and uh, I'm a nephew to, to Joyce. I got to know Joyce a long time ago, but really getting to know her, I started, I got to really know her, I think it was around 2014 when she first came to Uganda after a very long time. So that is where, that is where my memory of her begins. I want to thank everyone. The Reverend Alice Mutiara. Mutiara is a name um, uh, belonging to the clan that the Republic clan that Joyce belongs to. So, so, it's, uh, so it's, it's nice to know that uh, you know she's a sister. So it's nice to know that the brother is actually here. Taking us to the uh, service. I thank the ruling team. Uh, you have really persisted to, 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 uh, to have this service. It's been a long time. How many, how many months? About, about five months. But you have really persisted up to now. Yeah, from October. Really persisted up to now. We appreciate it. And I, uh, I also thank my my family here. I have a uh, I have, I have relatives here, um, aunties, uncles, uh, sisters, brothers, and they are, they are all here. I thank you for, for coming. I know it's my first time to be in London, and uh, I've actually seen that people don't, don't have much time, but you know, when someone sacrifices time, it's, it's precious. So thank you all for being here. And uh, I thank Dr. Mara. I, I I cannot I cannot forget the, the call he made to me. I remember I was at work, I was in uh, I was in Kenya when he called me. It was very early in the morning, around 6 a.m. And that was that was a call that I really don't think I can forget. It was heartbreaking because you know we we're, 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 in, the, we're in the middle of uh, Doing a few legal, a few legal documentations we have, and now I'm getting this news. So it was, it was shocking. And I just picked the call and called the way I told him, you know, just, just, just talk to him. It's not helping us anymore. But that's, that's one, that's one, that's, that, that is like I came to believe that, you know, that is like. But Joyce, as Doctor Malo already said. He's a second born actually. Um, there were three girls. The first one passed on earlier, and uh, she has passed on. Um, she has passed on next, and there's there's one sister, as you already explained, and she's unfortunately I couldn't they couldn't bring her because you know I, can, I cannot handle. I, I I don't know how to take care of her, but I just I just give support and in any way that I can. But thank you all for being here. And it's a great honor to know that she had friends. I just I just used to I just used to talk to her and she would uh, she would tell me about about things that were, would happen, maybe some friends I'm attending these friends. But you know you don't know who the person is so even if she told me about you I wouldn't know that you are the one. So, but, but, but it's nice to know that you're here. It's really nice. And uh, <coughs> thank you. That is all I have. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe if uh, someone from the thing or anywhere. Uh, if there are any questions, I just think anybody can come on. Oh, um, before I call the next uh, speaker, um, the concern and who treated her. Um, it is, thank you, Joseph. Joseph was a lovely lady, always polite and kind, and she was very sad that she died alone. Yeah, I can't add any more than that. That's what she was. Yeah, she was a, a friend to my family, my children, advising her on the right uh, things to do. Yeah. So that sums it all up. Uh, welcome. Um, 
Stephen, and Stephen, uh, a friend of Joyce. Uh, I remember the first ship in the early nights here, and we became friends a couple of days after, and uh, we used to talk, you know, a lot. And um, I'm just, I sort of wrote something here, uh, sort of made it along, and uh, it came to Joyce. Um, 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 thank you all for coming from here.
We know this is sad news, and we share our deepest sympathy with everyone impacted by tragedy. Our thoughts are with all you, all you guys. I, I close by saying to all who are grieving the loss of our beloved Joyce, please take comfort in knowing her life. Live, live on through our memories and memorable stories and their laughter and the love she shared with all of us. Joyce's light will never be taken away from us. Uh, it will shine. The spirit will remain alive in our hearts. Uh, and Joyce, rest in peace. That's all I have to say. We don't know whether there is somebody who is going to do the reading. Is there somebody who can to do this reading? Page six. Okay? That's fine. Scripture. <laughs> 3-1-8. There is time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather faith. Time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. <laughs> Mario Pane
joy C. That's the name of the lunch today. Joy C. Our church could be two ways. Joy and letter C, isn't it? Yeah. Or it could be joy and C as C E A D. So C something. So we have seen something when they read the Bible. I didn't know much about her at the time. But when Dr. Mara called me, there was a connection. We are from Rugabe clan. She's Nabatans, one of my daughters is Nabatans. So which means she's from Rugabe clan. So there was a connection. I remember spending time telling me and my boss was on self-sponsors I would work and an accounting firm. So I was speaking to me, taking love, the boss came, Alex. So now actually we were mixing Lugana and English, and then my boss came and said, my brother said, somebody was saying about the funeral. Uh, someone was passed, so did I had to give her in time. And there was a connection with it. There was a connection created, joy created was not some fire. They met once and they met at the Pentecost station. They clicked. Right? Joy said made a connection with the team. In two days' time, Stephen reconnected. And that is all we can celebrate in life. People we made and the connection we came. That's the only thing we can carry. We live a life deserved, as I had that word when you say, was deserved. But when she opened up, she blossomed. And life is so full of so many things as we heard from the first word. There is a time for everything. And now is a time for money. And death is so late. It's October last year. So many months. But it has been, it feels like it is like today. So today we gather to honor the memory of Joyce to celebrate and give thanks for her life. Joyce's presence in your life brought so many failing people in the world who had that wisdom, which was to find be the donor of wisdom, who find stay in the place for 20 years. No reason. Then a week or two are gone. And each of you will have known her. You have individual memory, you know. She had a team, and also she had for the few, for the first place. Maybe some of those memories may bring smile, and for some reason others may bring tears. But we lift each other, one, each one of them, up to God as we give time for Jesus' life. Whatever memories we have, we thank God for His life and all she shared. Whenever death comes, it hurts deeply for those of uh, for, for all of us who are left behind. The absence of our loved one is our in our lives leaves and uh, leaves a void. Because we can't see her. She's here. But we can't. We want to chant, we want to see that joy in her eyes. And she's gone. And so as we are lifting up our memories of joy to God, in the sense of our life today, it's also about continuing to comfort one another. Thank you for some for what you did. We need one another at a time like this. We need that community. It's a Sunday, it's very difficult, but at least we have committed to come here. This stops us short and makes us consider our own lives.
and that's an appropriate and respective part of day such, such as today. On a day like this, we Christians seek solace in the promise of resurrection, a hope that transcends the bounds of earth resource. We look up to God and we believe now, choice in the right hand. Now, as we live, there's a time for everything, a time to wait, a time to love, and a time to love. Psalm 23, verse 3, he revives our life. I'm from Yahweh, me, me, the shepherd, the good shepherd. In the gospel reading, we heard Jesus offer words of comfort to the disciples before he died. We can take comfort from these words today. This happened at the scene at the Last Supper. We were having a meal with the disciples. Jesus knew that in less than 24 hours, he would die upon the cross to make amends for the sins of the whole world. Jesus knew it, and the disciples were not, not yet able to see it. However, the disciples understood that for some reason Jesus would have to go. And they knew his going, and not in the way it happened. It was not something they wanted to hear. Their hearts were. Jesus understands their anxiety, but he wants them to be reassured, and so he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. So many things come, and if death is one, bereavement is one of them, you end up being troubled. He was not saying, Don't grieve, or don't mourn, or don't cry. This we can. Remember Jesus himself, he wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. It's okay to grieve, it's okay to cry, it's okay to grieve. Come on. The tear that are shed when we lose a loved one has a right, a right and proper. Jesus was a denying the pain of death, but was pointing beyond his home. Yes, there is death, but we look to the hope. We have a hope that is certain because Jesus has gone before us, that he is going through the and so into an eternal resurrection life. Honest people call Thomas a doubting disciple. Hey, Thomas, he wanted to know. He asked a question. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? He had a question. Sometimes we are asking these questions. Then Jesus was also and said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. You have to come to me. So it was a genuine question. And Jesus gave the best answer. Yes, Joyce is not with us in spirit, but we know his spirit is with the Lord. But we are one who have heart. The time we have spent with him, the things we have known, the care, caring for her sister, being there for her family, and also to celebrate with our friends. Those are the spirits that are developing in our memories, and we should hang on to it. And thank God for her 69 years we had her. Thank God for that. And let that be a stepping stone to build bridges, connections, such that in our community we grow to know one another. In our communities where we work, you become with a joy, like you can't make it hard joy. 
It's not happiness. Yes, happiness is there in a short while. So let's keep like calming and continue with that because you know, that's the only way we can build connections and reach out to many. We have a hope that is silent because Jesus has gone ahead of us, that he's gone through this into an internal resurrection life. These words also remind us the Joseph's life does not end here, but continues in the breath, in the presence of the loving Creator who has prepared a place for us. And so we bid farewell to Joseph's earthly form. We take comfort in the hope of reunion, knowing that one day. We will be reunited with her in the presence of Heavenly Father. Let us therefore cherish the memories we share with Jesus. For they were precious treasures that no person of time can diminish. May her leaders of love kindness and resilience inspire us to live our lives with purpose and companion, honoring the imprint she left on her and our hearts. We trust her into the hands of the one who promises eternal peace and joy. May, may you find comfort in the knowledge that Joyce is now at rest surrounded by the, the boundless love of God. Amen. We pause for a while before we come. Response is Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer and receive it. So let us pray. God of mercy, God of life, you have made us in your image to reflect your truth and light. We give thanks for choice, for the grace and mercy she received from you. For all that was good in her life, for the memories we praise her today, especially her character, the way she linked up with us, the connection she created. Lord, in your mercy, in your prayers. you promise in time of life to those who pray. Remember for good this your servant Jesus. But we remember her. Bring all who rest in Christ into the fullness of your kingdom. We are seen have no have been forgiven and death is no more. Lord in your mercy. Amen. Your mighty power brings joy to out of grave and life out of death. Look in mercy on the family son, our sister, the wider family, our friends, and hold them on. Give them patience, faith in times of death. Strengthen them with the knowledge of your love. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. In your hands. You are tender towards your children. 
your masses over all your, your works. Fill the memories of, of heart and failure. Give us the wisdom and grace to use and raise the time that is left to us here on earth. To turn to Christ and follow his steps in the way that leads to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Together. Okay. Pray, brethren, that my. Let's pray together there. Let's use this one. God of mercy, entrust into your hand all that you have made and rejoice in our communion with all of your faithful people. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So we now come to the next song, which is as I Patrick, which is on page 12.
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Let us commend joy to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Saints of God, come to her to Joyce's aid. I seem to meet Joyce, angels of the Lord. Receive Joyce soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of uh, Abraham. Receive joyous soul and present her to God the Most High. Internal rest grant her and to her all Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. God our Creator and Redeemer, by the power of Christ conquered death and entered into glory, confident of his victory and claiming his promises. We entrust joys to the mercy in the name of Jesus our Lord, who died and is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much for attending this service of bidding farewell to Joyce. Uh, Thank you for the organizing committee and everybody has been involved, especially we start, who started it for tomorrow, who said no, they should have to see the funeral back home with our sister. Thank you very much for that. And the team very much. This is now giving you back to get to the token and then go over to Uganda. At least to have said the word. 
Phoebe and her friends, colleagues who are food. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve, for sharing that. And of course, Sam. Because even before even the, it was signed, she started to do the work. She laughed because that's the very thing, investing in her to be taken off. Thank you for that. For being <laughs> I wish you well and we hope that everything goes well in your life. So I'm going to read one prayer and then we'll sing the last one. Please stand. God will show us the path of life in his presence in the fullness of joy at his right hand. There is pressure forevermore until he is able to keep us from falling and to present us fortress before the presence of his glory with exceeding joys. Joys to the only wise God and Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. So let us sing to God be to be God be with you. Thank you.